Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Kate. Welcome to our home in Chicago. Come on in and have a look around. Hi, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Kate Pierce. We're in my home in Evanston, Illinois. Our home was built in 1899, and Evanston is a really historic area for architecture. So we are in the Lakefront Historic District of Evanston. So a lot of homes around us have about the same age. They're around late 1890s. And it's a really fun place to just peruse the neighborhood and see the different architectural styles. Ours is a Queen Anne Victorian, and it was a complete gut job, really. I mean, we loved certain features of the home and we tried to keep the character and the history of the home, but essentially we have gutted the interior, um, kept these beautiful rounded moldings and some other features, but it's been a complete fixer upper. So when we moved here, we were moving from Long Island, New York. So we were doing a lot of virtual home shopping, if you will. So this home had been on our radar for a little while. We immediately knew it was the one. We had our girls with us, and at the time they were about four and eight years old, and they absolutely just fell in love with the neighborhood and the home. And it was just one of those, you know, we knew it was right moments when we came to see this home. This is our entryway and we are currently working on our entryway. So we have the staircase that I've been stripping for a year, but it's the original railing and newels and everything. So it's been a fun and absolutely horrible project all at the same time. <laughs> We're painting. So this is a work in progress, but what's finished in here is this Sandberg wallpaper. And we'll also be doing a complimentary wallpaper also from Sandberg under the chair rail along the staircase and it'll really tie in beautifully. I wish it was done to show you. One of my favorite pieces is this brutalist chandelier. Um, I don't believe it's a Tom Green, but it's always been my dream to own a Tom Green brutalist chandelier. And this one is a, such a similar style. Um, and I found it for such a great price from one of my good vintage dealing friends here in Chicago. So there's not a ton else going on in this space, um, but you know, I have the tiger rug and the prints just to, well, when you're coming in, say, welcome, you're at Kate's house. <laughs> so these are faux lemons that I had bought for Christmas. And I love, I always talk about on the blog how Christmas doesn't have to always scream Christmas. And I love getting pieces that I can then repurpose throughout the year. So these are just faux lemons I got off of Amazon and I did a fruit tree in our kitchen at Christmas time and repurposed them immediately after so I could feel like it's actually spring when it's not or more like summer, I guess. Um, so I just popped them in the vase there and I just love the pop of cheery yellow when you walk in. It's perfect February color. So these hardwood floors are all original. It was really important to me that we kept these floors when we had them refinished, um, the people refinishing them weren't 
super happy with me and they said this is absolutely the last time that these could be refinished they were only like a quarter of an inch thick because they had just they're so old and they had been sanded down too many times so i'm holding on to them for as long as i can and i've also noticed other homes in this neighborhood have exactly the same floors the same width with the nail heads on the top and Coming from Long Island, where there's a lot of historic homes, also, this is a type of floor I've never seen there. So I think it's probably um, specific to, if not Evanston, you know, this region of the country. Our biggest renovation this far has been our kitchen, and that was a complete gut job. We took down walls, we took a hallway away, we took a bathroom away. Um, completely kind of rearranged the back half of our first floor to make the kitchen a reality. And, you know, we broke ground in March and expected to be done late June, ran into some contractor issues. We DIY'd a lot of it, but we were hoping to have a little more help with the contractor. Um, but a lot of no show days, we had to fill in for him. We had deadlines, we were working with brands and we finally, put the range in and finished the kitchen on December 18th. So <laughs> not June as expected, but um, it came with a lot of challenges, that project, both just unexpected things you find in old homes. We had a huge leak. Um, our ceiling almost fell through right after we had sheetrocked the entire thing. So it wasn't the smoothest project, but now that it's done, we're just really grateful to have that space. So now I'd love to show you our living room, which is right off of our entryway. So here we are in the living room, which was the very first room that we tackled when we moved in. We just slathered it in this color. It's Current Mood by Claire. I get asked that question a lot. And it has some of my very favorite vintage pieces in here, like this travertine table I picked up on Facebook Marketplace back in New York when we lived there. And then there's this local shop, Jason Home in Chicago, that I bought this piece from. They obviously don't go together, but I love them together. And tons of vintage, again, that I have picked up over the years. This was another Facebook Marketplace purchase, this chessboard, this Onyx chessboard. This was an estate sale score, this really cool tramp art vase. The popsicle stick lamp is another piece from my vintage dealer friend who also sourced that chandelier in the entryway for me. Um, this piece is from one of my very favorite vintage places in Chicago called My Modern Oasis but it's a vintage marble pedestal. One of my very favorite stories is how I came to own this desk. And this is a perfect example of Billy not knowing when anything new enters the house. I had gone to pick up something, something small. I don't even remember what it was. And I saw this for $50 at a Habitat for Humanity restore. And it's just this gorgeous veneered walnut mid-century modern desk. Um, it was in great shape. I had no intention, and this is another thing when I say I don't know where a room is going and that the antiques and vintage just speak to me as I go. This is a perfect example. I never intended for a desk to be in this spot, but I'm so glad that it is there now. Um, so this piece is another one I picked up for super cheap. I think it was 40 bucks at an estate sale back in New York. It broke on me. I intend to fix it one day, but it's nothing a little throw a blanket can't handle for now. So this horse is another estate sale piece that I actually I have a very strangely specific memory for estate sales. And this one was probably at least five or six years ago. And it's the same sale I got the mirror in the next living room from. Um, it was a great sale. It was one of those diggers where you had to just dig through a lot of junk to find your gems, but there were plenty of gems to be had at that sale. So this sofa is one of the most asked about pieces in our entire home. It's from Interior Define, and it has this wonderful pink piping contrast on it. And another one of my favorite things about it is the storage, this lip, and you can see all the junk under there that my kids throw under there at any given time. I'm often asked how I keep this space so clean and I tell everyone it's usually not, but when I need to clean it up, it only takes a second because it can just all get thrown under the couch. 
So we have a turret on our house. So we have four rooms that have this round shape to it. And it has absolutely been a design challenge. When we first moved in, I had a round sofa in here and that sofa is now in that room next to us. Um, but it, it definitely can be a little bit tricky. I would say mimicking the shape of the room is a really big trick. This sofa, to be honest, I don't think is totally ideal for this space, but I, I just love the sofa. It's nice and it's big and it's functional. Um, but then window treatments can also be a challenge because our windows themselves are actually curved. So Roman shades are not an option for this space. Um, you know, there were shutters on some of the windows when we moved in. I didn't love that aesthetic. So we went with drapery in here that we can close off if we want some privacy or to keep out some extra sunlight. So these are prints from Minted, which we had used for our speakeasy project in New York. If you've been following me on Instagram for a long time, you maybe have seen that project. I think it's somewhere on my Instagram feed still also but I just love how they carry the colors from the sitting room just beyond it. That's another thing I talk about a lot with color is if you wanna use a lot of color, make sure you're bringing color from adjacent rooms into the opposite room so it feels like it flows better together, like the pinks from that room in this art, and then I have green in there too to carry the green color from this room into that room. This rug was a vintage piece that I got from an Instagram friend, Two Sisters Rug. I've had that a long time and it, it's a perfect scale to throw around the house and I change up its location all the time. This rug is a new piece in this room and it's from the Citizenry and it's a hand woven rug and it is really soft and cozy and I love how it lightens up the room because we have such a dark wall color throughout the space and I love how the rug just lightens everything up. And the last piece I'll probably talk about in here is this planter, which might be my favorite piece in my entire house. I found that at an estate sale. I'd seen the picture for the estate sale online and I ran into the house as soon as the estate sale opened and I took the planter and I hid it in a closet because I wanted to find some other stuff too. Um, but I can't remember the exact price, but somewhere around $100 for this beautiful ceramic Italian planter. Um, that is one of my favorite pieces of all time. I think fundamentally I've always known that I wanted to be in an interior design adjacent field, I guess is how I would describe it. I know in my kindergarten yearbook, when I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said an archeologist, which isn't this, but it's something similar. It's digging for past artifacts. There's always been that interest in history and the history of design. Um, my academic background is in art history, so my undergraduate and graduate degrees are in art history. Um, so I think art and creativity is something that has followed me throughout my life or something that I pursued throughout my life. And though this was never where I exactly intended on ending up, um, I'm not surprised that I'm here. So though we have done a lot of work on the home, and as I mentioned, it's a complete fixer upper, we really did want to preserve the character of this home. So one example is the brass hardware um, that is throughout the home, which did need a lot of love. I am still not totally done with that process, but we've been cleaning up the hardware at certain moments it doesn't match the rest of the home and the one really cool aspect of living in Evanston where all the homes essentially are historic is I can go to this place called the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse or even other places down in Chicago and a lot of the homes will share the hardware that my home has which is fairly unique but because these are all period homes it can be possible to find the hardware. My favorite story though is right in front of me right now is a pocket door that is definitely original to the home, but we didn't realize that it was there because there was molding covering it. And one day we were trying to put some electric in the wall here and we took the molding off and found the pocket door. And this is another example of the hardware just being on one side of the door and I shared it on Instagram and someone in Chicago who followed me on Instagram found the exact pocket door hardware 
for me and I was able to order it on eBay to match the other side. So it's been fun. Um, it obviously would be easier to just switch out all the hardware to something new that would all match, but I just really am passionate about preserving the history of the home. So next, I'd love to show you our pink living room, which is just next to the green one. So here we are in the pink living room, which is the room that Billy and I really spend a whole lot of time in. And it is again filled with a lot of my favorite vintage pieces and antique pieces, but there's a good mix of new in here as well. Like this coffee table from France and Sons. I just loved how it worked with the curved white sofa here. You know, sourcing sofa tables for a curved sofa can be a little bit tricky, but again, I think you just mimic the shape and that's the safest way to go about that. And I love how the arches on it also kind of mimic the roundness of both pieces. Um, one of my favorite stories is this piece. This was from probably one of the first estate sales I went to as an adult. I got dragged to plenty of estate sales as a child of my mother, but it was one of the first time I was sourcing pieces for my own apartment in Manhattan. And it was this sale in Greenwich Village. I don't think the apartment had been opened in a hundred years. It was just bizarre. There was thick layers of dust everywhere. I think the newest piece in the home must have been from 1930 or 1940. Um, but I got this for $5 and this barley twist at the bottom is just a really fun, unique twist, um, pun intended. And I get asked about this piece all the time and everyone's blown away that I only paid $5 for it. This piece, I have two of these. Um, one is currently broken but Billy reupholstered this chair for me and I got these off of auction. I think they were $100 each um, and I think they're Adrian Pearsall chairs. I'm not 100% sure that they're authentic, but regardless, I love them. They're really comfortable actually and they again mimic the roundness, which these pieces, the sofa and this chair were both in the round living room and I'm just kind of always mixing things up to keep it fresh, but this space has its own roundedness to it, even though it has angles. It's not a perfectly square room either. Um, so this curved sofa also works really well in this space. Another one of my favorite pieces is this one from Jason Home, that story I mentioned earlier that's in Chicago. And they get a lot of European antiques into their shop. And I worked with them last year. They did some photography in our home for their catalog. And they gifted me this chair as a thank you. It's also one of my favorite pieces. I just love the tassel fringe on the bottom, or I think it's called bullion fringe, technically. Also, another favorite is this mantle. This is not original to our home, which is a little bit obvious because of this gap between the original tiles and the mantle, which is something I hope to figure out how to make it a little more seamless down the road. But this is from Salvage One, which is this fantastic architectural salvage place down in Chicago. It's absolutely enormous. They have the coolest pieces taking out from all of these amazing homes in the area from Oak Park and Evanston and Chicago, these historic homes, um, just have these great pieces and I, I'm really happy about being able to reuse and repurpose this piece in our home. And the mantle is decorated with some of my favorite vintage pieces also, but also some newer pieces like these. This is from one of my favorite ceramicists, um, Sierra Fabrications, and I have a lot of her pieces in my home. She's Vermont based and I highly recommend checking her out. She's incredible. This is a TV. So this is where our TV is in the home. I don't love having our TV above the mantle, but you can see with all of the curves and the entryways, there was really no other place to put it. Um, but I wanted it to just feel like a piece of art when it's off. So we actually built this frame and by we, I mean, Billy <laughs> built this frame um, so that it would really fit our aesthetic more than the Samsung frame TVs really come in. Um, and we also switch out what art is on it depending on our mood and the season. And this, I'm actually kind of in the process of playing around with this as a gallery wall surrounding it. So the fireplace is working-ish. 
Um, we had someone come to check it out for us when we first moved in and we were told we can only burn one Duraflame log at a time. I guess Duraflame burns cleaner than wood. So we do use it all the time, more for the aesthetics and the actual heat that it would give off, but it is mildly functioning. We do hope to turn it into a gas fireplace down the road, but we were told we have to completely redo our chimney and it's this huge project that we are just, it's not fitting in our budget anytime too soon. This mirror is one of my favorite pieces as well that was sourced from the same estate sale that that horse was back in New York. And I had asked, it was this beautiful home, but it hadn't really had any love in a long time. So it was a digger, but they had this garage in the back. I asked if I could go check it out. And it didn't look like much of anything in the garage until I started just going through stuff. And this mirror was buried under piles of stuff. It was covered in dust. And I could just tell that it was a cool piece though. So they sold it to me for I think $40 and I brought it home and it's been in my last home and this home. It's one of my favorite pieces. These sconces are Venetian glass. Um, I found those on Cherish and they came directly from Italy. We don't currently have electricity going to them, but that's another project we hope to tackle in the near term. Um, I did around Christmas time, I actually think one of the flameless candles, I stuck them in there and um, you know, the battery operated candles, you just kind of press it, but they don't have batteries in them right now. But it was really nice getting that glow from them and I can't wait to actually have them hardwired so we can enjoy them all the time. So these were just built last night by Billy and he said he had bought them for me for Christmas and he meant to put them together for Christmas. So he got around to it yesterday and I don't know that I'll leave them here forever, but um, you know, I might kind of put them around the house in different places, but this is such a fun um, new Lego that I'm sure a lot of you have seen all of the different um, floral botanical Legos that everybody has been sharing on Instagram. And then this little lip piece is from one of my favorite artist and she also has a vintage shop. She's Canadian based and her name's Mariana. She's at the decor studio is her handle on Instagram. And I have a lot of her pieces throughout my house as well. And then this tray um, is from a place called Ortigia, which is in Sicily. So that was a piece sourced from one of our vacations. So that's another thing, but you know, antiques and vintage are great. And I shop for antiques and vintage on vacation. But a lot of pieces in our home are also from our travels. And I think that really adds to the character and the meaningfulness of the pieces throughout our home. They really just bring back some really fun memories of trips that we've had together. So this rug was again, originally in that room. And I would love to have a round, room, round rug in the green living room as well. But in here, having a not round rug becomes a problem with these tiles on the fireplace because you just need to kind of cut off an angle of the rug. So round just makes a lot more sense in this space. But this is a handmade rug from Morocco and my friend Becca, who her handle is at June in blue. Um, she's based in France now, but she sources Moroccan rugs, both vintage and new and she gets them from different tribes in Morocco and they were able to actually tailor the rug after making it to make it round to fit my space, um, which was lovely because it took care of this issue that I have with the fireplace tiles and that overlapping, but it also works beautifully in the round living room right next to us. So the paint color in here, which I call pink, plenty of people think is a neutral. It's somewhere in between probably, but this is Faro and Ball Templeton pink. So see, it really is a pink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the pocket door that we found and it's a big project. We still have to add molding back. We have to strip the door and sand it. So it is not complete. I actually, unfortunately, took the hardware off too to kind of get started on that project. But this is what we found just hidden in the molding of this wall. Um, and it's a mess, but it will be beautiful once we're done fixing it up. I think as far as defining my personal style, it has a lot to do with color, but I think it is mostly defined by those vintage and antique pieces. And I think I put things together in an unexpected way. As I had mentioned earlier, I'll put 
an antique next to a mid-century modern piece. And I, I never know what I'm going to do when I start a room. I mean, I have a vague idea, but as I also mentioned earlier, I really let the estate sales and the antique stores and the thrift stores and Facebook marketplace speak to me. And I find those, you know, pieces that I can build a room off of. So I think, you know, color, vintage, antiques, and just an unexpectedness, um, I think really define my spaces and my personal style. One thing I love about Billy and my husband is that he doesn't have any opinions. And in some ways it can be frustrating because if I want some advice or opinion or direction, he never has anything to offer me. Um, but in other ways, it's wonderful. In two ways, I think, uh, essentially one, he doesn't have any opinions, so I can just do everything that I want. And then secondly, he doesn't even notice things. So if I'm at the antique store and I find a piece I really love, I don't have to worry about him actually noticing that there's like a whole new dining room table in our home. He just won't even notice. So um, he is extremely helpful and absolutely the one who is directing all of the DIY. He's knowledgeable with electric and plumbing and carpentry and he really can do it all. Um, but when it comes to design, that is definitely um, where I come in and that's pretty much 100% me on the design end. So next, I would love to take you into the dining room, which is right next to this pink living room. So this is actually my childhood piano and it's not the best piano, but it feels very nostalgic. It's the one that I learned on as a kid and now my kids are learning on here. So we brought that piece from New York. So this rug was my 30th birthday present from my mother. I was at an estate sale with her and I just loved this rug but I had absolutely no money, so she bought it for me and it smelled like cigarette smoke. So we had to have it cleaned, I think five or six different times by different rug cleaners before it actually, the smell came out, but thankfully it did. Um, this piece was a secondhand score, but it's actually from France and Sons. Um, is this after Serge Mouillet, which was a famous French uh, furniture designer from the mid century. Um, these are Milo Boffman chairs, and they were also saw, sourced by a vintage dealer here in Chicago. And they have the original upholstery, which is really fun. It actually zips off for an easy cleaning as well. This piece, we call him Ned. If you've been following me on Instagram, there's lots of jokes that run around about Ned, but I found him at an estate sale attic for $10, and he's an original acrylic. And no, he is not a family member. He is a complete stranger, but he feels like family now that he's been with us for about 10 years. Um, this china cabinet here is also a piece that was sourced by, he's actually New Jersey based, but he, um, he's called Secondhand Stories. And that was when we were living in New York. We got this beautiful mid-century piece from him as well, which I love just kind of showing my oddities and collections and We've been collecting decanters for a long time also. A lot of them are mid-century in style that Billy likes to put his whiskey collection in. I also collect busts. So a lot of these are from different places and different estate sales um, that I've gotten over the years. And children, whenever they come over my house, they always ask why there are so many body parts and heads and whatever. <laughs> but I think it's all about the weirdness. I think that's what makes it fun and interesting. These artworks are pieces that I recently made and was selling with a company called Third Brush. Um, that's why they're kind of still in packages and stuff. We're working on just getting those hung around the house. The wallpaper on the ceiling is another much asked about feature in this room. That's from Bell Art Studios. It's a Swedish wallpaper company. They have really beautiful wallpaper, which you'll see another one of their papers in the next space. Um, but I just love the interest that it adds to the ceiling. And we also added crown molding in here, which we've been slowly adding to the home. I believe there was crown molding in here, um, but some owner in the past must have taken it out. So we are putting it back and I could be wrong about that, but I like the way this home looks with crown molding. I think it looks more appropriate for the period. These are mostly magazines here. 
Um, some are art books from some of my favorite artists. And yeah, I've read most of them, at least partially most of them. This one's on Basquiat, Kandinsky. Um, and these, again, are mostly magazines, though. And these are Art Forum magazines, which is a magazine I have been getting since my early 20s. I have hordes of stacks of them upstairs. But, you know, I do read them, but I also just think they're really beautiful and they kind of keep you up to date on what's going on in the art world. And then just some of my favorite design magazines like The World of Interiors and Arc Digest, El Decor. Like I have just stacks of magazines because I do actually refer back to them quite often for inspiration. Um, so I do like to keep them around, but I think they're just beautiful pieces um, on their own as aesthetic standstills. This, I have to have some pieces around that my kids can play with so they don't play with all of my vintage pieces. But my older daughter, um, she's now 11, but she built this, I think, when she was nine. And she loves building Legos, but I just, we have tons of them up in her attic. I just think this piece is really fun. And my little one is constantly playing with it. So that's why you see all these pieces around. And when kids come over to her house, they'll sit here and play with it also. So I love that it's a cool aesthetic piece, but also really functional as a play toy that still looks cool. So I just felt like for this home, it made more sense for the dining room to have a darker, moodier, more serious feel. It was also inspired by the rug. Um, this rug is fairly neutral. It could really go with almost any color, but I played both off the rug and the wallpaper on the ceiling to come up with the wall color. And again, that was I actually did a little bit of research into period homes and what colors they would have in their living room. And that did seem to be a historically appropriate decision, if you will, to have it be a bit of a darker, moodier, more historic color in here. I absolutely think the thing that makes a home come alive is those older pieces. I think if you're shopping at just Target and Ikea, um, I'm not knocking those places. I have pieces from both Target and Ikea in my own home but I think what really gives it soul is those older pieces that have been around forever and they're just more well-made, um, more interesting. I think also mixing eras is something that gives a soul home or a home soul um, because if it's all just the same and similar silhouettes and similar colors, I think it can just read as a little la lacking dimension, I guess. And um, I think that it's absolutely essential to have antiques, vintage, and, and mixing different antiques and vintage from different eras in a home. So just off of our dining room is this powder room, which was originally actually the butler's pantry that connected to the kitchen before we renovated. So we demolished our powder room for the kitchen renovation and decided to make the butler's pantry into our powder room. And I have been loving the, it's called Vintage Landscape Mural by Bell Art Studios. It's the same wallpaper studio that did the wallpaper in our ceiling in our dining room. So that was absolutely the jumping off point for this space. And then I really just loved how this terracotta tile, it has these little pieces of zelig that kind of make the terracotta meet but it felt really historically appropriate and it really blended in beautifully with the landscape mural. This is a vintage piece that I found off of Cherish. It was in upstate New York, so I had it shipped here, but it was a great price. It has awesome storage inside. I found this marble top at that same restore place I was talking about earlier, the Evanston Restore Warehouse and I just pulled it off of the top of a different vanity. The sink was actually already in it, which was great. And I think I paid $70 or something like that for the whole marble top and sink. This faucet was in our powder room already. I had bought it for that powder room when we moved in, but we just shifted it over. The mirror is also from the rebuilding warehouse. And these are from Original BTC, which is a British lighting company, and they make the most beautiful light fixtures. Um, another thing to point out is this over here 
is a letter from 1914 written in Swedish. And when we demolished this room, we found this envelope in the wall and it wasn't even opened. So we opened it to read the letter. We had someone on Instagram help us translate it. And it's a letter to Elsa, the woman who lived in her home at the time, a letter from her mother talking about her father's poor health back in Sweden and just some other, you know, really not too interesting facts, but it's just such a cool piece. And we want it to be displayed right around where we found it in the wall. And this piece here is a chair I inherited from a family member. And I just think it looks cute in here and there's really no other reason for it other than that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's mostly it other than like my cute little brass, you know, it's a cigarette ashtray. Um, doesn't serve a function other than looking cute. And this is from another one of my Instagram vintage dealer friends that bust I've had for a long time as well. I have always found inspiration in lots of different places. I would say primarily in traveling. So I was coming off a trip to Portugal and Sicily when I was putting the kitchen together. So, you know, those really deeply veined natural honed marbles um, were something that really spoke to me. And a lot of people say, oh, don't go for the trendy stuff. You know, deeply veined bold marbles are really trending right now. But I always say like, look to the past and see what has stood the test of time. You'll find that in ancient Greece and ancient Rome and you'll see it in art deco buildings from the 1920s. It's not, it's not just a trend. I think, um, you know, that's another thing that's been important is pulling things together that feel relevant and timely, but are still classic and timeless. A close second would be just going to the marble yard and going to the thrift store and estate sales and antique stores, finding those pieces that can be your jumping off point. So for me, it was that marble I found on the marble yard that was really the jumping off point. And then second to that was this antique piece that is serving as the island. And then I kind of just built off of that. You know, I never have a complete vision when I'm starting off, but I'll find those vintage and antique pieces first and then build a space around that. And from there, it all just kind of seems to fall into place. Next, I'd love to show you our kitchen. Let's go check it out. So here we are in the kitchen, which is our most recent renovation. We just completed it last month, or I guess technically two months ago now. Um, I think I had maybe mentioned earlier how one of the first things I picked out for this space was the stone. I went to the marble yard. I honestly intended on getting a calicata viola, but I just saw this stone there and this is called Palnazzo Rose and I had it honed. It was not honed at the time I saw it on the marble yard. And this kind of served as the basis and the jumping off point for the rest of the kitchen. Um, this backsplash also, and the tiny little shelf is something that I took from Athena Calderon's kitchen. And I just love how having no uppers and having the tiny little shelf really opens up the space, lets it breathe. And we compensate for that, which you'll see in a few minutes. Um, we have a whole wall of floor to ceiling cabinetry, so it can still function for us um, with plenty of storage. So the next thing was the Bertizzoni Appliances, which is a brand I have been wanting to work with for the longest time. And I absolutely love their Heritage Series line because it's this perfect marriage of modern and vintage aesthetics and just incredible functionality. And this is an induction range, um, which is another thing I have been wanting for a long time because it's more environmentally friendly and just healthier since there's no gas running to it. It's electric um, is how it works. So the blue cabinet tree with the applied molding fronts, I thought would just be the perfect way to bring in some color, but also make the home, it feel really period appropriate with the applied molding and these more traditional, um, you know, cabinet hardware. And there is no blue explicitly in the marble, but I kind of just loved how this shade of blue played into the marble and the darker tones and 
complements the lighter pink tones throughout as well. And then one of my favorite pieces in the kitchen is this, which is an antique work table um, from Paris. I found it on Cherish and I can be really cheap when it comes to sourcing vintage and antiques. So it took me a really long time to find a piece with the right dimensions um, that was in my price range. And then I had to wait 16 weeks to have it shipped because I didn't want to pay a lot for shipping either. But I just love how it adds so much character and warmth to the kitchen. And that was one of the earlier decisions that I made for this space. And everything kind of just bounced off of that as well. Um, you know, going to the floors next where we have herringbone. It's called Renatza herringbone by Divine Flooring. And I loved how the herringbone, again, felt like it was appropriate for the period of the home, but it brings some geometric interest into the kitchen and doesn't blend in too well with this wood work table that's now our island. So these bar stools I have been crushing on for the longest time. I usually like to source as much vintage as I can for a kitchen and bar stools feel like a really obvious space to do that but I just couldn't get these stools out of my head. These are called the Wave Bar Stools and they're made by Rachel Donath. She's an Australian designer um, and she has absolutely beautiful pieces even beyond these Wave Bar Stools, but these are one of the most complimented features in the entire kitchen as well. So the island um, is just styled with some pieces. I'm always playing around with how to style things. You know, most people don't think about such things in their kitchen, but because I do blogging and social media for a living, it's something that I'm constantly playing around with. And this was just a piece that was gifted by my mother-in-law. This is just a tiny piece off Amazon. Um, these marble grapes are vintage pieces that I think I got from an Instagram vintage dealer friend, but I've had these a while and I don't 100% remember where I got those. But the countertop on the island here is actually a granite. A lot of people think it's soapstone, but I wanted to go with something that was really hard um, and durable because I, this is very porous, the marble. So this is really where we drink our coffee or red wine and do a lot of our food prep um, so that we can keep this marble looking good. It is beautiful, but it's not the most practical. <laughs> The decision behind the island having a different countertop and being a different color is I think when you extend the cabinetry around your kitchen onto your island, it can start to feel a little matchy matchy. And one of my favorite kitchen designers um, is the Studio Devol Kitchens. They're a British kitchen shop and they are really famous for making kitchens feel like they're just an extension of the home and they use a lot of armoires in lieu of cabinetry and things like that so that it doesn't feel, you know, so cold and it feels more warm, like it really belongs in the rest of the house and it's not a purely a space for work. It's also a extension of the home. So I actually originally envisioned not even having a top on this. I wanted this to kind of serve as um, a really warm component to warm up the rest of the kitchen and make it feel more like a furniture piece and less like just a bunch of cabinets being thrown into the center of the room. So these floor to ceiling cabinetry pieces were both an aesthetic and a functional decision because we decided to not have uppers around the rest of the kitchen. We really needed to compensate for that with lots of storage space. I also wanted it to just be aesthetically seamless. So we went for the panel ready fridge and dishwasher on the other side of the room so that it just appears like it's all one big piece of cabinetry. And over here, this is where we moved our basement stairs. There used to be a door here that would go to the basement. This is now a pantry, but that gives us a lot of additional storage in here as well. This is um, another project that will happen soon, but this is a back staircase in our home. A lot of our neighbors who have been renovating homes around here have eliminated their back staircase to allow for more room um, in the upstairs 
and on the kitchen level. But we just really love the function of this back staircase. And to be honest, we use this back staircase more than we even use the front. So even though it doesn't look pretty yet, it's a really functional aspect of our home. And then moving over here to our coffee bar, um, it's really a beverage bar, I guess, if you will. We had this sink in the integrated sink within the Pelonazzo Rose marble. Um, I just love how that looks aesthetically. But again, this is a pretty porous marble, so I opted for a porcelain sink um, for our main work sink. And this piece, as well as our main faucet, are from Devol, that British kitchen company I was mentioning earlier. Um, this is a ceramic from Jill Rosenwald. She's one of my favorite ceramicists. She does really funky and cool stuff. And it's also, we have two um, fridges here as well, the wine and beverage fridges, which is the reason why this is overlay and this is inset um, because that just had to be <laughs> the case. But there's also storage there as well. But I have some vintage glassware here. Um, one of my favorite little teapot scores from an estate sale and this marble bookend from even the books are from an estate sale. And this is from our trip to Sicily. It's a Testa di Moro, which if you've ever seen White Lotus, you've probably seen the Sicilian Testa di Moro and they've picked up a few of those or some also on the other side of the kitchen from our Sicily trip. So this piece, um, it's a whole set. And this is from an estate sale I went to with my mother and sister-in-law. And we didn't realize that it was actually um, Donald Trump's finance manager's home. And he had to liquidate his entire estate. And we didn't even realize until leaving the sale whose house we had been at. But it was kind of a random story. It's, that's the fun thing about estate sales is you don't really know where you are, but you pick up on clues based on what's in the home. And um, that was just kind of a funny story from a sale last year, but there's other vintage glassware also in the cabinet. Um, this is another favorite of mine. These are peekaboo glassware, which I don't know how appropriate these are, but you can see on the back side. Um, these are a believer from the 1930s and they're kind of highly collectible. So I pick them up as I find them. Another wildly asked about question in this kitchen is this ladder which Billy built and I need to do a tutorial on how to build it because everybody keeps asking, but he you know, purchased this hardware as a ladder kit and then he just built the ladder himself. This is a piece I found at the thrift store last year and it's a planter made out of pine cones and this fern is always like dropping leaves, but I just love this piece and I even bring it outside in the summer. It's pretty hardy with the weather because it's made of pine cones, I guess. Um, then moving on over to our breakfast nook. This was one of the only arguments that Billy and I had. He really wanted to have a big farmhouse table and I really wanted the breakfast nook. I just thought the design of the space it made more sense to not be blocking the doorway and have this little nook here. It was just the perfect little spot for it. So he finally gave it and I don't think he has any regrets. But this um, Burlwood veneer table is a piece I sourced in New York before we moved. It was in our dining room. I moved it into here. These pieces are vintage Mexican rope chairs from my modern oasis, one of my favorite Chicago vintage dealers. And this striped banquette is from Ballard Designs. And I am often asked about this piece as well. It comes in a lot of different fabrics so you can kind of customize it for your own home. Um, these pieces, these are vintage candlesticks from another Instagram friend. Um, this fluted marble bowl is from Curated Home Decor, is a shop in Wisconsin that has really wonderful vintage and new pieces. And then I have the gallery wall here of art pieces I've been collecting for a really long time. Um, a lot of people ask why I put these pieces together and there's not a huge rhyme or reason for it. But one thing I would say about gallery walls is I think when they match too much, they fall a little flat. So I always love mixing frames and mixing, um, you know, whether a portrait or a landscape, just 
giving it a little bit of dimension, I think, is always a really fun idea. But I think the colors in these pieces play really well together as well. Um, and then these little cafe curtains we made ourselves. Billy made this little bar that went across, and I made the curtains. And these are from House of Hackney. Um, I think it's called Limerick is the fabric. And those were super easy and quick DIY. The pendant that's hanging over here is from Jason Home, that Chicago shop I was speaking about also. And that's their terrine pendant, and that's in the gravel color. And I just love what a statement it makes, and it gives off the prettiest soft glow at night when we're sitting here having dinner. And it's not our only light source. A lot of people ask about that as well. We do have um, can lighting throughout the ceiling, so if we really need a lot of light, we have that option but we have a lot of different light sources that can set a lot of different moods and can function for a lot of different reasons for us, which was another thing that was really thought about a lot when we were designing this kitchen. So these I actually added, um, you can see underneath it's just the rope chair here, which actually was just not the most comfortable. So I sourced, these are really inexpensive. They're from World Market. Um, I think they even came in packs of two, but they're really cozy and they're actually surprisingly easy to clean as well. So I love how they really warm up the breakfast nook as well. So we eat either at this table or at the counter here. We're a family of four, so we have the four bar stools. I would say almost every meal though is eaten at this table. Our dining room is in the midst of being transitioned into a library. We're going to be doing um, installed custom cabinetry throughout that room. And right now we have all of our books in our guest room upstairs, but I really wanted to bring them down and you know allow people to come in, borrow them and look at them. And it also allows me to have more of my vintage pieces on display um, for the shelves, which you know when you have a lot of vintage pieces and you are a hoarder of thrift and vintage you want somewhere to display them so those shelves will give me an opportunity to display some of the pieces that i have in storage as well so that's a project for this year and yeah it won't really function as a dining room at all anymore it will have the table in there so when we have extra guests we can transition it into a table we can eat at but for the most part it will be a library and not a dining room the word home means a lot of different things, but I think moving from New York where I was born and grew up and where my entire family still is, it's been a little bit difficult making this home feel like home, but it's an interesting question because just last night we were sitting around watching the Super Bowl and you know, we were eating, my family is Italian and we had all of the Italian meats and cheeses and everything out. And it just hit me that it was really the first time that I felt like our home was home. And I was trying to really pin it down exactly what it was that made me have that feeling. Um, but I think it's surrounding myself with things I love and the people I love, having my daughters here and I think food is also another element. You know, my mom is always cooking and coming home and having those smells. Um, it's just that like olfactory sense that really brings you to this idea of home. So it's, it's a lot of things and I wish I could articulate it better, but I think it's just, it's not a single thing. It's a lot of things coming together. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.